encounter your word and even your spirit visit us tonight give us encounters that last in the name of Jesus I pray in the name of Jesus we pray God bless you please be seated God bless you be seated glory be to the name of the Lord for giving us another opportunity to be changed to be lifted the Bible says they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion not as many who desire strength those who appear before the Lord in Zion may God take us from glory to glory yeah. hallelujah the house of God is among many other things the house of God is a place of spiritual illumination please listen is a place of revelation the assignment of revelation is to empower are we together now yes empowerment in this kingdom comes on account of light if you lack spiritual illumination you will not be able to be empowered nor will you be able to rise the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter even unto the perfect day so every time we're gathered before God it is important for us to know that this is not just a cinema where you come to watch a movie this is not a theater where you come to watch performance this is God in the midst of his people coming through his word to change to transform to heal to deliver and to lift that means at the time you are saying may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ a wiser you should be the one speaking a more empowered you should be the one speaking a more audacious you should be the one speaking a more enlightened you you cannot be the same person who prayed the opening prayer and then shares the grace it means that God did not do anything in your life hallelujah and tonight will be no different in Jesus name praise the name of the Lord um, I want to specially appreciate all the workers in this house I just I just thought to do this very sincerely hallelujah um, leading a large ministry like this requires more than being anointed you must have willing hands willing hearts you cannot imagine the things that happen to make every koinonia service a wonderful experience and i want to thank every worker in this house when we were coming and you know i saw our security people you know in the rain happily moving around you know I, I just thought i said it has to be the love of god that constrains a man this way now this is not just leadership tradition i mean it from the depth of my heart i have taught you here that not everybody thinks you are a big deal I hope you still remember that teaching not everybody thinks you are that important or deserving of their commitment and their participation and if and when you do find people who can inconvenience themselves and bend over backwards you must have the discernment the humility and the unashamedness to celebrate them and recognize them as many times as possible so again thank you thank you very much all the workers leaders the Lord bless you and honor you in the name of Jesus hallelujah I celebrate everyone who has come especially for those who have come from outside this nation and outside this city thank you very much you will never be the same in Jesus name particularly I want to thank just a few very special people first is Reverend Joshua Tende and his dear wife may God bless you sir all the way from father's delight 
in Zaria. Let's honor them. Very marvelous man of God. Thank you, sir. Such an honor to have you around. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm also told that we have in our midst General Bindu and his wife. Am I right on that? Please let's honor him and give him a big God bless you. Wherever you are, sir, you are blessed and we honor you. Oh, please give him a big God bless you, General. Thank you so much. All the way from Jaji, the Lord bless and honor you. Thank you for coming. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Tonight's teaching will be a cure for inconsistencies. Tonight's teaching will be a cure for compromises of standards. Tonight's teaching will produce predictability and sustainability to your results. In the name of Jesus Christ. Striving for Mastery, Part 3. We're looking tonight at the power of systems and structures. Striving for mastery. For those of you who are just joining us uh, for the first time, whether online or here on site, we've been um, dealing with a series of teachings, even though we took a two-week break to do the miracle service and then um, respond to the matters of the time. But now we're back to finish it up striving for mastery this is a three-part series intended to empower us the goal of this series is to make our christian experience richer and to make our results predictable it is god's desire that we move past the realm of shadow boxing and the realm of trial and error to a point where we can lay hold of eternal life and we'll be able to communicate the things of the spirit with precision with clarity and then command results that bring glory to the name of the Lord part one we looked at the foundation where we consider the spirituality of life please pay attention we said how that life and living is spiritual in its entirety the Bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that this visible realm came out from the invisible realm Hebrews chapter 11 one to three says now faith is calls it the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen verse 2 says for by it that faith the elders obtained a good report verse 3 gives us that information it says through faith we understand we were not there but there is an information that has come and we believe through faith that the walls were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear hallelujah even when Jesus manifested the Bible calls him the express image of the invisible God so the realm of the spirit controls the physical realm we said that also that the realm of the spirit governs the physical realm the physical realm is helplessly a slave to the realm of the spirit that when you want to adjust realities your point of reference becomes the realm of the spirit first in order of priority according to second corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18 the bible says second corinthians 4 and verse 18 while we look not at the things which are seen but the things which are not seen so there are things that are seen and things which are unseen and the bible says both of them are realities just because it is unseen does not mean it is unreal hallelujah because the bible says you can look at it there is substance even to that which is unseen it says for the things which are seen are temporal it means they are subject to change under a certain condition but the things which are not seen are long lasting or eternal and then we looked at a few keys that would help us um, maximize the spirituality of life we looked at the ministry of prayer and then we said we have to understand and engage the laws and the principles of the kingdom part two was basically the laws of dominion 
we said that dominion in this kingdom is a resultant effect of your knowing and comprehending the ways of God that there is a relationship between the ways of God and the glory of God remember the teaching Exodus chapter 33 and verse 13 Moses prayed and said God show me now thy way then verse 18 he now said show me your glory so there is a relationship between his ways and his glory when you know and understand his ways inevitably you will experience his glory Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 the Lord commanded Moses that there is always something that you should do and the glory of the Lord shall appear it will not just appear because you desire it there is what you must do for the glory to appear and we looked at a number of laws number one was the law of total surrender number two was the law of mental transformation number three was the law of value and contribution number four we looked at the law of authority number five we looked at the law of faith number six we looked at i hope i'm right on this we looked at the law of relationships number seven we looked at the law of honor then we looked at the law of favor and then finally we looked at the law of spiritual empowerment why do you need to know this because they are keys these are the keys that make for dominion it is impossible to trade these kingdom secrets and remain small and remain an amateur in spiritual things these are the laws that help us to contend for mastery remember second timothy chapter 2 and verse 5 the bible says he that strives for masteries is not crowned except he strives lawfully so if you want your christian experience and your results to be predictable these are the spiritual laws that work behind the scenes to produce an enviable life and an enviable destiny part three today we'll be looking at the power of systems and structures i plead with you in the name of jesus that you open up your spirit because what you're about to learn will change your life in a way that probably you are not prepared for may the lord grant us understanding in jesus name ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 10 ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 10 the bible says if the iron be blunt and he do not wet the edge that means to sharpen it it says then must he put more strength but wisdom is profitable in that it sustains the ability to direct I have said it here that truth in itself does not bless arbitrarily just because you are in the presence of the truth and just because you have the truth does not mean you will be changed by it that truth that is randomly communicated will not produce growth and stature in the believer for truth to profit you it has to be communicated holistically and then number two it has to be arranged sequentially because the believer is likened to a spiritual house and if you ask any architect and any builder all of the materials we see here are required in building the house but they are not all required at the same time and they are not all required in the same quantity am i right on that another analogy the chef you bring a chef and tell him list all of the ingredients that will be needed to produce this meal he will list all of them and he can even give you that is truth but you will not be able to produce that meal why because you must be taught the combination there are certain ingredients that you have to apply when the food is already off you know the fire or whatever it is there are the ingredients that you need to start the process there are others if you miss the timing or you miss the quantity you cannot put say for a plate of rice 
the same quantity of rice and the same quantity of salt both of them are needed but not to the same degree so it takes it takes the mastery of a chef to communicate truth to god's people in a way that builds and edifies paul called himself a wise master builder are we together so just because you have access to truth does not mean you will be able to produce results with it i can give you bags of cement i can give you blocks i can give you a few metals i can give you all kinds of things and you will stand there looking at the tools that can build you a house and yet not be able to build a house because it takes skill are we together write this down please god is a god of systems and structures god is a god of systems and structures this is a very important aspect of god that will be useful for our discussion tonight that god is a god of systems and structures what does that mean that means look up please that every time god builds he builds with the intention to allow what he built continue are we together without him having to come and build it again we see that in the book of the beginnings genesis the bible tells us that when he made the trees he put capacity in them to have the seed that will keep reproducing again is that true god will seldom start a process and come back and do it again you will hardly find the same miracle happening twice in the bible god will initiate that process and create a system around that process so that any day you want to see that result you find out the system that makes for that reproduction are we together now there are many people who do not understand the systems of god and yet they want to be able to reproduce results again and again and again the realm of mastery is a realm of systems and structures it was god's servant bishop Oedipo that said you walk by common sense he said you run by principles but you fly by instructions you see the difference you just need common sense to walk then you need principles to run but if it has to do with flight you need instructions that direct you methodically Ezekiel chapter 37 hmm. verse 1 Ezekiel 37 the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley that was full of bones verse 2 he caused me to pass by them round about and behold the bible says there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry please look up now we see a picture of chaos we see a picture of death we see a picture of decadence are we together now ezekiel is giving us the privilege to share of his vision and he's saying he's taken to a valley of dry bones in the spirit and among the many things that he sees there are just bones and one important information is that those bones were scattered no life no order there was disarray and chaos the Bible says they were very dry, meaning they had been in that condition for a long time. How many of you know that if you see dry bones around, it means that a bone means there was once a human, a human bone now. Is that true? But something happened to those people and they began to deteriorate until it became that experience that Ezekiel was seeing. Verse 3, we're reading to 7, the full text is to 14. But we may just stop at seven and he said unto me son of man can these bones live please look up was it the bones that god was interested in from this story no he was interested in the full army but notice for a long time his emphasis was on the bones because he knew that if something did not happen to the bones that army would not come back his intention was to have a robust army but his first port of call was the bones that life was even useless 
until the bones were in place hmm. can these bones leave not can this man leave the goal was to have the man alive but he needed to deal with the issue of the bones and i answered O lord god thou knowest verse 4 he said unto me prophesy again unto the bones and say unto them O ye dry bones hear ye the word of the lord verse 5 thus saith the lord god unto these bones behold i will cause breath to enter into you and you shall leave verse 6 now and i will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you upon what the bone that is now alive breath came into the bones and now flesh and other things can come to cover it he says and put breath in you and ye shall leave and ye shall know that i am the lord i am the lord verse 7 so i prophesied as i was commanded and as i prophesied there was a noise and behold a shaking this is the part i like and the bones came together it would have stopped there but the bible says bone to his bone say systems bone to his bone because it was not the coming together of the bones that was the issue it was that they had to be arranged accurately and the bible did not leave us in the dark for that army to be formidable and for life to be profitable in those humans the bones had to look for their places of assignment and stay there bone to his bone There are many believers as individuals, as organizations, as churches who downplay the power of systems and structures in being able to effectively live, number one, and then effectively communicate the purposes of the kingdom. As far as gaining mastery is concerned, we have downplayed this and made it look like it is not a spiritual issue after all we say if my relationship with the lord jesus christ is important and i pursue that one every other thing will happen and it is not so you will be learning right now that every aspect of your life the continuity of every aspect of your life and the efficiency depends on your ability to build systems and structures around it if you're with me say amen. amen let's do a few definitions please write this down what is a system a system I'll give you two definitions very quickly then I'll begin to teach there's so much for us to learn May God will grant us grace a system is a set of elements please write let's hurry up a system is a set of elements or components that are organized for a common purpose i'll take it again a system is a set of elements or components that are organized for a common purpose a set of elements or components that are organized for a common purpose second definition a system is a set of principles or procedures please write let me allow you write and then I finish it a system is a set of principles or procedures according to which something is done a system is a set of principles or procedures according to which something is done a set of principles or procedures according to which something is done it is also called an organized approach a system is an organized approach so that's the definition of a system when we talk about a system in one sentence we mean an organized approach of doing something or to doing something what is a structure a structure comes from the Latin word structura. S-T-R-U-C-T-U-R-A. Structura. Which means to fit together or to build. I'm being very simple because I want all of us to understand. 
the word structura the latin expression for structure it means to fit together it means to build so what is the definition of structure now it means the way in which parts of a system are arranged my apologies for rushing you structure means the way in which parts of a system are arranged the way in which parts of a system are arranged so systems talk about execution strategies while structures talk of build up or leadership strategies when you talk of systems it means an approach how things are done but when you talk of structures you mean how things are built systems talk of execution structures talk of organization the way things are built is God helping us please write this down no growth process or result is sustainable until and unless it is systematized very powerful information no growth process or result whether spiritually and otherwise no growth process or result is sustainable until and unless it is systematized that means whatever you are doing provided you have not systematized it there is no sustainability there the longevity factor in everything we do is the system that is built around it no growth process or result is sustainable until and unless it is systematized please write this down to systematize means to make the outcome predictable by generating a formula to systematize means to make the outcome predictable by generating a formula be patient with my definitions and then i'll begin to teach to systematize means to make the outcome predictable by generating a formula or creating an approach so you systematize anything because you want to make the outcome predictable and you do that by generating a formula or creating an approach very very powerful please look up this gentleman is playing this keyboard right here come he stopped playing what happened to the sound it stopped why did it stop because it was built that there are keys you touch to produce that outcome is that true go back and continue what you're doing everybody listen very carefully you're about to hear a sound now remember demons are still on earth and yet the sound was not stopped do you know why because the intelligence that built this programs a system the owner who the owner the those who designed this the yamaha company they do not even know that there is a ministry using their product right now and their presence does not have to be here for it to work the system immortalizes their presence so that they don't have to come here it brings predictability that everywhere on earth this product is being used under the same condition it will produce the same result there's rain falling and for those of us in Nigeria here and many parts of Africa this is the rainy season and we're having rains and enjoying the showers of blessings did you know that there are other parts of the world who people are enjoying the same thing right now simply because a system was created is that true the moment you do not systematize any operation around your life inconsistencies and compromises will be inevitable the staying power and the ability to stay true to your formula to stay true to your modus operandi 
depends on your systematizing whatever you are doing. Please pay very close attention. What are the advantage of systems? Let's look at the advantage of systems and structures. Let me just talk on that and get it out of the way. Then we'll now begin to deal with these issues. You will be surprised. For many of you, this teaching tonight is going to be answering your prayer. While your spiritual life will be up today and down tomorrow. Your prayer life up today, down tomorrow. It looks like you are carrying the power of God. You know, even for a preacher, you find out that you do well in a season, then you do not do well again. Because there is the absence of systems and structures. When there are no systems and structures in your life, you will freelance everything. Your emotions will govern anything you are doing and emotions vacillate. You will not be able to produce consistency. Let's look at the advantage of systems. What are the advantages of systems? I will give you five very quickly. Please write. Patiently write. Number one systems make it possible for everyone who engages them to have the same or similar effect i'll come again systems make it possible for everyone who engages them to have the same or similar results systems make it possible for everyone who engages them to have the same or similar results amazing isn't it this beautiful structure right here can be reproduced anywhere in the world where there is land and you don't need to carry this building and, and move with it all you need to do is carry the architectural plan is that true you can even give an architect who has never seen this and he will so reproduce it with digital precision to a point that you can lie down here to sleep and they relocate you to another kind of this you will wake up thinking you are where you left because of consistency of systems how many of you have seen estates where people build and you can see hundred buildings looking the same the power of systems systems make it possible for everyone who engages them to have the same or similar results isn't that powerful for instance the system allocated for salvation right now we are here listening to god speak to us there is a crusade going on somewhere across the globe and anyone who engages that system the bible says for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation even if it is in a hole a plane on land in the belly of the fish wherever you engage this system salvation becomes yours are we together that makes it possible for the nigerian the american the european the asian anyone at all can receive jesus the moment you subscribe to the system that the administration of eternal life was connected to imagine with me if everybody in the world had to see me to be saved do you know how many people will go to hell god is too loving to create that kind of risk that means the day i don't feel like waking up people will go to hell that day because i'm tired or because my emotions were not at their best and so he created a system that even when there is no man to get the person born again the holy spirit can lead that man to engage that system and alone in the room you will still be saved ah powerful do you know why i'm saying this because some of you by reason of what you are hearing tonight there are results you've only read about this knowledge is about to ship it from the book you read and make it happen in your life or from the life you saw happen the same way you saw the anointing flow the same way you saw wisdom flow the same way you saw the organization build if you can understand the system you can reproduce the result so systems make it possible for everyone who engages them to have the same or similar effect number two very quickly systems and structures minimize biases and sentiments this is very powerful systems and structures minimize biases and sentiments 
God put systems there to minimize biases and sentiments. If results depended on biases and sentiments, then there are certain people who may never have it. For instance, Africa. For instance, certain well-intentioned believers. But thank God that everything that has to do with the kingdom, in as much as there is God there that supervises it, he made it systemic. So that biases and sentiments would not interrupt our rising to mastery. Number three, systems and structures guarantee sustainability or longevity of results. That's a very important advantage. Systems and structures guarantee sustainability and longevity of results. We don't have so much of those buildings in Nigeria, sadly. But when you travel to the US or you travel to Europe, you will see buildings and structures that are 200, 300 years old. Is that true? And they are still standing solid because those who built them did not build them to collapse after two years. At the back of the builders, the builders designed that that structure would outlive them. And you can still see people buying those homes. A 150 year old house and someone is buying it. Not as, a, as an artifact to say, okay, this is, I, I'm the owner of this. Come and see for tourism. He, he intends to live there. There may be a few adjustments that will be made there, but it will still be there. You go to Israel for pilgrimage and you find out that there are many things that you would see that have been preserved in almost their original state systems guarantee sustainability i don't know the oldest business in nigeria respectfully speaking i don't know the oldest organization in this nation but there are organizations across the globe including ministries that they would tell you they are so 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 and so years old great-grandfather handed it over to father or grandfather grandfather handed it over to father father has now handed it over to son and you know great-grandson and so on and so forth and they are still running it with the level of excellence some of you buy certain products and you see written on it established 18 or 1907 and yet you are still consuming that product everyone who made that product and was part of it foundationally must have transited and yet you are enjoying the product systems and structures guarantee sustainability and longevity of results that includes your spiritual life that includes your finances that includes every other aspect of your life number four is God speaking to someone already number four systems and structures make replication possible this is a powerful information systems and structures make replication or reproduction possible you can replicate any result when you make it systemic systems and structures make replication possible for instance the lord jesus christ the early church and us today hallelujah we were not there when he died we were not there when he rose but there was a system that he designed and we are beneficiaries of that system to the point that by the election of grace we can stand today and do the same thing paul did we can stand today and preach like jesus preached and see the results jesus saw preach like paul preached and see the result preach like like rain had bonke preach preach like tl osborne and all these people we may never have met them as individuals but even when they left the system was still here very powerful the last advantage systems and structures now listen carefully systems and structures provide a basis for commendation correction promotion and demotion 
without biases or emotional interference be patient and i'll read it you have to get it that systems and structures provide a basis for commendation they provide a basis for rebuke or correction they provide a basis for promotion and they provide a basis for demotion without biases or emotional interference this is powerful the presence of systems and structures can legitimize you commending someone or an organization can legitimize you rebuking or correcting can legitimize you promoting an individual or even demoting an individual without biases and without sentiments this is true for individuals and this is true for organizations please look up even in our walk with god god does not comment emotionally god does not correct emotionally god does not promote emotionally god does not demote emotionally there is always a basis for everything he does when you look at the seven churches in the book of revelation every commendation was based on something every rebuke was based on a standard if there is no reference there is no basis for commending or rebuking listen if you do not operate by systems and structures there will be too much bias in your operation tribalism will destroy you gender sensitiveness will destroy you and all kinds of needless biases will ruin your life and even ruin your organization now please hear me positive compromises only become profitable when the structure and the standard is in place there will always be positive compromises but they are useless unless and until there are standards in place Is someone learning how do I know I am wrong how do I know I am right how do I know I am due for promotion and when you demote me how do I know you are justified except and unless there are systems and structures there are many leaders in this nation respectfully speaking there are many men of god there are many leaders in various areas who do these four things they commend without a reference they rebuke and correct without a reference they promote without a reference and they demote without a reference it is as i like no you cannot build anything great with those kinds of sentiments the, many of you here are legal practitioners when you go to the court of law when they say an offender or whatever or even if you are commending someone based on this and that they will read it for you based on this and that the constitution of nigeria or whatever it is there is a compendium of the modus operandi of the citizens within a country and they will tell you based on this 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 you have violated a b c and now the judge will now met the punishment there are there are certain things called tampering justice with mercy am i right and then there is what they call soft landing but at least the the standard is there before god showed us his mercy and grace he opened us up to see that listen based on my justice you fell however my mercy is there and my grace is there we couldn't have appreciated his mercy and his grace until and unless he gave us an opportunity to see how bad we fell are we together there are businesses today where you see someone from a cleaner is automatically promoted to become a manager and i believe in favor i have taught you but from from a leadership standpoint you ask the ceo and say based on what the person will say he made me happy not knowing that that cleaner was only happy because he was poor and broke he has not become the version that will hurt you and then the next thing as a as a ceo now the potential that was locked up in him now begins to be revealed there are many needless battles there are many pains that are uncalled for simply because people did not systematize their lives double standards of dealing with your life double standards of leading in an organization why because it is not systemic please look up god who is love god who is love 
created hellfire and gave everybody an opportunity that even at the, the detriment of your eternal destiny, God will still respect you if you honor or violate the system. God who is love and God who is merciful, there are people today in hell because they willingly chose. Can you imagine that? Systems and structures. No wonder the Bible says, I said before you this day, blessing and cursing. Is it in your Bible? I said before you this day, life and death. But I advise you that you choose life, that you and your seed may live. Write this down. For an individual, for an individual, you must create two kinds of systems around your life basically for an individual you must create two kinds of systems in your life basically number one a value system or what we call a code of conduct and number two an operational guide based on your convictions and priorities i'll take it again for an individual that means if you desire to excel to last to thrive to gain mastery you must create two kinds of systems in your life number one a value system or what we call a code of conduct number two you must create an operational guide that means a modus operandi a modus operandi just means how things are done that are based on your convictions and based on your priorities the bible says a man who does not have a watch over his spirit is like a city without walls please look at me if you must excel as an individual and rise in every area and dimension of your life then you must be prepared to know that living emotionally especially in this day is a risk I repeat living just based on emotions and sentiments will at best leave you an average person or a defeated fellow even spiritually you must be able to create a code of conduct or an operational guide that is based on your convictions and your priorities if your conviction is scripture then you must build it to be referenced to scripture you must create a value system or code of conduct and then an operational guide for your life now write this down for an organization an organization means a church a business an NGO whatever kind of corporate platform write this down please you must create a compendium you must create a compendium of the systems and the modus operandi that run the organization and use it to train your staff your workforce your membership and so on and so forth for an organization you must create a compendium of the systems and the modus operandi that run that organization that means everybody within that organization should understand the systems that function there and they should understand the modus operandi how things are done there you use that compendium to train your staff you use it to train your workforce you even use it to train your membership hallelujah now if imagine with me for a moment please look up imagine with me that this mic goes off i'm unable to get it powered so that i speak and everybody who loves me and want to hear the gospel just runs and comes to help me put on the mic what do you have chaos is that true there must be a system that defines who does what so that if sound goes off 
you don't have to be blamed for the carelessness of someone you see one of the blessings of systems is that everybody cannot be blamed for the carelessness of one person you are able to allocate responsibilities and allocate commendations accordingly you must be able to build this now please write this down well this is this is really the heart of our discussion right now how to build formidable systems and structures i want to teach you something very powerful then we'll now come to our lives striving for mastery part three the power of systems and structures please look up how to build formidable systems and structures haven't told you all of these things what systems and structures are and the advantages that they provide in the life of an individual and even an organization it is important for you to know how to build formidable systems and structures there are there are six questions that everybody must answer this night if you want to build a system and a structure in your life and in your organization it is important to answer these questions let's deal with them very quickly number one the first question that everybody must be able to answer if you desire to build a formidable system and a structure around your life is number one why do i exist the question of vision the question of the goal that is to be achieved the knowledge of the end product you cannot build effective systems around your life if you cannot answer the question of vision why do i exist as a person as far as god's divine plan is concerned why do we exist as an organization there must be a clear definition of your vision there must be a clear definition of the goal to be achieved there must be a clear definition of the end product is someone learning please look up it is difficult to systematize anything if you do not know why it exists when jesus showed up he gave us his manifesto in clear terms in fact his name his very name captured his manifesto jesus jehoshua the one who saves that salvation to seek and to save the lost was his primary goal he also added to us that he came as a correction of our idea about god that everything we thought god is or god was jesus came as a marking script so that we will look at his life and begin to edit our understanding about god that was told us by the prophets and by the law how many of us here can tell me with precision why your organization exists what vision it is pursuing now what goal it seeks to achieve what is the end product man of god i know you are praying and fasting but can you tell me what you are trusting god to become do you know that many people do not have an idea of what the end product is so there are several activities that are leading nowhere are you learning now there are many people today respectfully speaking who do not excel in ministry because the ministry has no known vision the ministry does not have any goal the ministry does not have even an end product as a man of god when you teach and mentor people in a church like this you must have an idea of the back end of your mentorship what should they become beloved people please look at me how many of you will go to a school or send your children to a school whose end you do not know imagine a lecturer coming into a class and seeing several people and saying well i am professor this or doctor this i am here to teach you and the students have no idea no reference as to what they should become can i tell you knowing the end product gives you the power to endure you cannot indefinitely stay, receive the staying power to become nothing who for the joy that was set before him is it in your bible he endured the cross 
and he despised the shame. There must be a clear definition of your vision, a vision for your life, a goal to be achieved. So God has called you into ministry. Hallelujah. What has he given you? What is, what is the end product? What do you see yourself becoming? You must answer that question. There are many businesses today that just happened because of hunger. There was no vision. So the, the business cannot even last more than one year because the motivation was not anything long term. The man was hungry and he was just told that, look, if you at least do something, exchange value, you will get something to eat. It is a risk to start moving without knowing where you are going. Imagine with me, ladies and gentlemen, that you stop and an, a bolt or uber or any of the transport systems you have around and then you tell the man take me to so 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 place do you know it the man says yes and then he begins to fire running like he's been pursued by police and then he's taking you somewhere you don't know where you are going so you were banking on his knowledge and later on he would confess to you that sincerely i forgot to tell you this is my first day at work I just came into Abuja last week. Would you clap for such a person and say, wow, you are, you are such an... Let's keep going. Now, hold on. Is there a problem with motion? Is there a problem with activity? Is there a problem with speed? And yet there is no arrival in the presence of motion, in the presence of activity, even in the presence of speed. Without vision, you will not arrive. Is someone hearing what I'm saying now? Yes. That is the reason why you give meetings names so that those who come for the meetings have an idea of what to expect. If you say you are coming for a citywide crusade, all those who come, they know what to expect. If you call it a crusade, don't blame me for bringing someone on a wheelchair. Don't blame me for carrying a dead child and coming with the person. You call it a crusade. There are things that should happen in a crusade ground imagine with me that we call a meeting a crusade and as soon as people come for instance and respectfully speaking i'm teaching you five keys to prosperity that is not wrong but that is wrong for the name given to that meeting a crusade targets the salvation of sinners and then at best the strengthening of believers within a territory hallelujah you must answer the question of vision there are many of you you want to be men of god if i ask you why say there's something boiling in my heart i just know that i'm supposed to be doing this that is good but not enough motivation not enough to stand in the midst of all the things that befall you as you serve god who for the joy that was set before you endured the cross despised the shame number two is god helping us the second question you must ask tonight if you want to build systems and structures in your life is who are the beneficiaries of my solutions very powerful question you want to build a system around your life that helps you produce impact who are the beneficiaries of my solutions don't say i am sent to everybody potentially yes but who are the beneficiaries of my solution Jesus himself, when he came, he said he was here to seek and save the lost. That means if the father had found you, he didn't have a ministry for you. To seek and to save the lost. There are many of us here, you do not know those who have been mandated to be the beneficiaries of your solutions. As a man of God, you do not even know those you are sent to. As a businessman, you do not even understand your clientele. You have to know those you were sent to. When Moses had an encounter with God, God did not say, Moses, take this rod, roam around anywhere you see human beings. Just tell them you have met the God of the Bible. Watch this. The nature of his training was with respect to where he would be sent to. Is someone, is someone learning now? Yes. Moses, I am sending you to Egypt. Here is your mandate. 
deliver them from the hand of Pharaoh. Take them out of Egypt into a land flowing with milk and honey. Precision. And to meet Pharaoh, I would have to train you. Very powerful. Who are the beneficiaries of your solutions? Can I tell you? Every mandate and any call, whether in ministry, whether in business, there, there are targeted beneficiaries that you must understand. It can be an age range, it can be a vision, it can be a gender. You have to know your clientele. I know those God has sent me to. Every time I see people who need encounters and revival in their life, every time I see people who have gone down spiritually, you are calling for my attention. Every time I see someone who has not been saved, you have not encountered Jesus, you are calling for my attention. Every time I see someone who is spiritually down, there is no fervency, no fire, no appetite for spiritual things, you are calling for my attention. Everywhere I see demons oppressing people, you are calling for my attention. Don't invite me just show me someone oppressed that is my invitation based on the mandate show me someone who is sick that needs a demonstration of the power of God show me a territory that needs revival and fire you are calling me question what calls you there are many people who do not know what calls them what calls you for some of you you have been raised as kingdom financiers that everywhere you see poverty and lack and the house of God suffering, something should call you. But you are not able to create any system to be excellent. Why? God cannot even use you to be a kingdom financier because you do not know the beneficiaries of your solution. Don't downplay what you are hearing. We have a lot of politicians here. When they make you a house member, you are not a house member of Nigeria. You are not a house member or a senator they, they 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 define a region is that true and your your assignment principally is to that region who are the beneficiaries of my solutions so that you can invest your time not knowing this will help you, will make you build wrong systems. You are going to be ministering to people you are not gifted for, people you are not graced towards. Are we together now? Very, very important. I sing. I'm not ignorant as far as music is concerned. I was once a music director, but my call is not to be a worship minister to go to the nations. So I will sing, but I will sing while I am preaching. There is nobody who has invited me to come and sing a special number. Yet if you invite me, I must almost always sing. Why? Because that gift can find expression as a subset of the bigger picture. Are we together now? In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you sincerely from this night. May God lead you to find those who are the beneficiaries of your anointing the beneficiaries of your call that that gift that he put within your spirit you must find those you are sent to please sit down man of God listen there are many people today who are genuinely called of God but they have not been able to identify those that God put the solution in them for there is, respectfully speaking, there, there is a ministry called the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship. How many of you know that ministry? Now, do you know that that is a powerful ministry that has changed lives? The ministry came targeted to business people and people of influence because the, the founders discovered that it was difficult to minister to people of influence. So the whole idea is to evangelize people and keep them on fire for God and then to use their influence for kingdom come. That is what defines that ministry. You will not see full gospel businessmen having a deliverance service or going around um, having a crusade from city to city. But you will see them hold a meeting with only 30 people. And based on the definition of their ministry, they are highly successful. 
The blind pursuit for general results that creates competition, creates frustration, is because we have not defined. There are businesses that do not have more than 100 clients, yet they are billion naira and billion dollar businesses because the nature of the business, it does not serve everybody. Is that true? Who are the beneficiaries of my solutions? Question three. Is someone learning tonight? Question three. Are you ready? What tools do I need? This is powerful. Now I'm, I'm answering questions that will help me build systems and structures around my life. Question three. What tools do I need? Your tools talk about your skills. Your tools talk about your resources. Your tools talk about your relationships. What skills will I need? Don't just create systems out of nothing. What tools do I need? Please look up. In this ministry, for instance, because of the nature of what God has called us to do, we know that to be effective, there are tools that we need and there are resources that we need. Are we together now? That is what birthed the structuring of every department. We know that there will be need for a media capture. And so there are media people who are walking all around as I'm speaking. We know that the nature of the ministry and the size of the ministry will necessitate a, a very intelligent security system at the highest level possible. And so there is every kind of security system imaginable put in place. You cannot create systems until you know the tools that you need. What do you need to succeed? There are some of you, can I tell you, what you need to succeed in your assignment is billions and billions and billions. That will now help you to know what to put in place. The kind of structures that will drive you. What tools do I need? Please look up. If you are Moses, remember you need a rod. Never move until you find a rod. If you are David, don't stand before Goliath until you have your sling. And make sure there are five stones, not an empty sling. Is, someone speak, is God speaking to someone here? Yes. What tools do I need? Look up, please. If you are a man of God and you know that you need a high level anointing, a high level manifestation of the power of God in your life, then you see, knowing that you need those tools, you can now create a system that makes sure that your spiritual life never goes down. Because you need, at every given point in your life, the nature of your call will demand that you are on fire all the time. To be instant in season and out of season. Number four. Are you ready? The fourth question you have to ask, and especially for organizations, but then it also applies to your life, is who does what? The fourth question you must answer, who does what? Distribution of tasks. You will fail in life if you do everything. Most leaders fail in life because they cannot trust anybody. Who does what is a question you must ask. As wonderful and great as this ministry is, there are things I don't come close to. You know why? I rather do my work of oversight and allow those who are skilled and exceptional to do it. I can play this keyboard, you see, but I cannot play this keyboard as effective as this person is playing. I can play drums. I can play most of the instruments here. But I, I have not mastered to that level of efficiency and combining both of them will not make me efficient. So there is a definition. We are all on stage and we are all ministering. But who does what? Husband, who does what? To avoid trouble. Wife, who does what? Children, who does what? Man of God, who does what? There has to be a proper definition of tasks. 
I will never come for koinonia and cross my leg when it's time for the word. You see me come and I sit down quietly. The worship team doing their thing, testimonies, everyone doing their thing because I have my own slot in the program too. I can't get up arbitrarily and say, this is my ministry. All of you sit down. Even if I'm going to veto for a cause, I owe you an explanation to say the Holy Spirit came in and you will know this is an exception. I told you compromises only make sense when standards are in place. Now, please look up. I'm saying this respectfully. You know that I love the body of Christ. I'm teaching you and as many who would want to listen. There are many ministries and many organizations that do not have order because there is no definition of who does what. The man of God can do anything while it is while the service is going on you will see papers flying around sorry you are the one who is going to raise offering are you aware and person i didn't prepare it's okay just use second corinthians chapter eight and nine or nine and eight and you see those discussions and the person comes up and he's looking confused and wondering hoping he's right and he says praise the lord hallelujah praise the lord and all kinds of things are happening and then finally you raise the offering and you don't know what to do there is no order three people will come and raise offerings and it's as if they, are, they were trained by three different people they don't know what to say no standards no systems can you let me tell you this systems should be greater than individuals so that it does not matter who is doing the work the result is the same an example is your car it does not matter whether it's the husband driving or the wife is driving because it is not them that define how the car moves. A system, there is the mechanics of the car. Are we together? When you go to any of our banks across the globe, you will almost find similar or the same experience yet they are sacking people and employing newer people do you know why they are not really concerned about the individuals because they know that the individuals will be immersed into a system that will limit their emotional interferences listen i'm teaching you this because this is how global brands spread they spread through systems so you can see apple kenya apple south africa apple nigeria apple uk individuals who may have never met themselves until and unless they're having an executive meeting and yet their results are similar you know why there is a common code that governs them when you call somebody a doctor say a consultant surgeon the person may be in abuja there may be another consultant surgeon in lagos another co consultant surgeon in adamawa three of them can literally meet the first time and meet inside a surgery room and none of them will be afraid of one another because there is a system that made them what they are how about the lecturers that teach students some of them talk fast some of them talk slow some of them look dull even though they are intelligent respectfully speaking some of them are very smart some of them have all kinds of temperaments but regardless the personality differences the students will still become what was desired because the system in this case the manual the modus operandi is greater than the personal biases of the lecturers do you know why i am sure that you will be nothing short of a sign and a wonder it is not because of the person standing before you this is it Mm. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way. I can still teach you, even though I don't know your background. I can still teach you, even though I know you may not have an advantage by default. Regardless the situation, this was built to survive and produce a champion out of everyone regardless the limitation if i teach you my opinions i will only teach those whose life and history is similar to mine and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise even unto salvation is god helping someone so who does what please look at me there are some of you, the reason why you are inefficient in your life today, right now, as you are listening to me, is because you are doing many things that your level of growth, 
you are supposed to have outsourced those things and given other people there are some of you right now respectfully speaking with the level to which god has lifted you and helped you you should not be the one roaming around to wash your clothes the three hours you are spending washing your clothes by reason of your lifting now is a waste of time you will say it's humility i respect you but you are wasting time Do you understand what I'm teaching you now? Most of the efficient people in life, they write everything that they need to excel and begin to allocate responsibilities. This was what was killing Moses in the Bible. If you read, if you read, every time there is increase, you will have to shed off a lot of responsibilities and allot it to people you can trust so that you focus on the things that matter moses was wearing himself counseling people from morning till night and jethro his father-in-law said mr man you're about to kill yourself find people and set them as captains over hundreds thousands the same thing happened in acts chapter 6 the apostles were overseeing the sharing of food and there was a problem when you read from verse 1 among the Grecian women and all of that and the disciples said no 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 the apostles you are distracting us we are about a serious assignment right now it says look among yourself give it to us please now verse 2 or 3 it says look among yourselves seven men of honest report full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom whom we may appoint over this business it is business but not your business this business what is our own business verse 4 it says but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry let me tell you this please look up respectfully speaking there are many men of God whose spiritual fire has gone down and who fail woefully now as far as the ministry of the word is concerned because administrative duties have become a burden on them and they cannot trust anyone. Can I tell you, when you are overly afraid of everybody, the problem is you. You have to take the risk to trust people. How were you when God started using you? All of us are students in training and sometimes you have to stamp your feet and just risk it this is very powerful there are things in my life that i minimize i don't get myself involved in some of the brightest and the finest leaders globally speaking they minimize themselves to two three or four important tasks and they give their all to it there's a statement they used to say jack of all jack of all trades master of none it's true let me tell you the truth you cannot effectively lead a ministry like this if you are the one involved in checking the offering and finding out where it went to and then you quickly find out where the security people are and then while you are here you are looking there are things you cannot do your times of fasting your times of prayer do you know what it takes to prepare one series you can see some of the things i'm bringing those definitions did not come in the place of prayer. I studied. <laughs> of course, there are things that come in. But are you getting what I'm saying now? There is, there is, you cannot imagine. Believe me, I'm not exaggerating. The materials that I consult for one sermon. I preach an average of three sermons per week. Aside from school of ministry and a lot of other things. You cannot have the time to do a lot of things and still excel. Please define who does what some of you have grown-up children in your house you are still washing your car you are still washing your clothes call those children and tell them to behave themselves well and this is not about abuse or bully this is about training even if you are prosperous if they cannot do anything they should follow you and learn so that the day you are not there the system is in place can I tell you hold on you know that something is wrong when the system collapses in your absence every time your absence creates such a big vacuum something was wrong with the systemic nature of yourself or your organization i used to say it when i was in zaria that even if i'm not there for one year the only thing that should be missed 
is the unique expression of the grace of God upon my life but it should not collapse if the ministry collapses there I failed woefully so if I don't come for koinonia for one month the only thing you should miss here is the unique expression of my grace not edification not growth if growth stops with my absence then I failed listen let me tell you this some of you God is speaking to you if you do not build systems around your life you will not be able to maximize destiny you will fail in many other areas of your life because many things will depend on you wrongly so systems number five don't be tired though please listen your destiny needs this when a patient goes to the doctor sometimes they will say swallow a drug it doesn't like it but the doctor says swallow it i know what i'm giving you and sometimes you turn as you are swallowing one you are also receiving injection you don't like it but you need it what some of you are hearing now you need it for some of you you don't need it now but you need it keep it no matter how much light i give you you will not need it when you are in the day but when the night comes you will quickly go back some of you are about to build businesses some of you are about to build ministries you may not need now what i'm giving you but pay attention to it and you will thank me some of you this is what you need right now we're about to talk about these areas of your life shortly question five are you ready the fifth question you must answer what is the most important aspect of the vision to focus on now what is the most important aspect of the vision to focus on now this talks about emphasis can i tell you god is not doing everything in your life at every time god is a god of times and seasons and he operates based on emphasis there is always something god is doing now there is always something an organization is doing now yes there are many things in the blueprint but God works one by one. Woe betides a man who cannot find the emphasis for his life and destiny now. Please look at me. There are some of you, based on what God is doing in your life now, you should not be reading books on finances, reading books on leadership. You are just starting with God. The emphasis should be pressing into God with fasting and prayer. You got born again late. Now you got filled with the Holy Ghost just a few months ago. Trying to compress everything you, you need. There are things God needs to achieve in your life now. Every spiritual man who was built well will tell you how God started with us. God didn't start with finances and systems and all of that. He started with Jesus. He started with hunger. He started with fire. If you notice, even as a man of God, you will know how to disciple and train people. You don't just get people born again and the next thing you are teaching them financial principles. Next thing you are teaching them leadership principles. I'm not being sarcastic, but within the limit of how growth happens, there are things line upon line, precepts upon precepts. Is God speaking to us? Mm. I remember when I started with God, there was nothing about finance pressing. In fact, there was even nothing about the mind, mental transformation. It was fire, presence, encounter. Lord, show me your glory. Visions almost from morning till night. It's as if you can't rest. You put your head down, an angel. You put your head down, some, and you are wondering, God, what are you doing with my life? You lift your hands, you put it down. Your hands are shaking, fire, cold sensation. You don't even know the name of what is happening. You lie down to sleep. You don't know whether the weather is cold or it's just you. These are, there are all kinds of impartations happening within your spirit, man. But the season will come when God will say, Now, son, you have done well in terms of your growth. Now you need to begin to study on your mind. Because your spiritual health alone will not produce victory holistically. So God started introducing us to other people. And at first, some of us resisted it because it did not carry the semblance. It looked like a betrayal to our fire. Like some of you, is happening to you now as you are listening to me. It looks like hearing what you are hearing is a betrayal to your passion for revival. Soon you will know that the sound system that you put on that crusade ground will require systems and organization for you to preach well. Are you learning now? 
we love the Lord with all our heart the first time we went on crusade there was not so much about administration but goodness there was fire and signs and wonders we finish the preaching of the crusade but we're owing money for sound say systems spirituality did not fail but there was system failure <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ God will complete everything that needs to be completed in your life to make your Christian experience holistic in the name of Jesus Christ look up please God is not doing everything every time he has emphasis and as a leader you must know what is God's emphasis in your life You must know what is the emphasis of your business at this point. When Koinonia started, please look up. I used to share with the people those days that the assignment was to enthrone Christ first in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities. But first things first. The first phase of the ministry had to do with building people. So there was not so much emphasis to aesthetics and structure and all of that. It didn't mean that we didn't believe in excellence. But in order of priority, are we together now? So people could sit on the ground. People could sit in an auditorium that maybe didn't have the best of ambience. Because one day it will happen. My philosophy as given from God was that when you build people, the people will build the structure. And thank God for that wisdom that people were built and some of those people that were built today are the ones serving doing marvelous and mighty things first Corinthians 10 23 first Corinthians 10 23 it says all things are lawful if you look at it from amplified it says all things are permissible all things are we are free to do anything we please he says but not all things are helpful expedient profitable wholesome all things are legitimate but not all things are constructive very powerful you must know what god is doing per season in your life look at me there are some of you even though you are great men of god revivalist you will get to a point in your life where god's emphasis with you is your finances don't neglect it just because you feel that okay now um, I should just focus on if, uh, 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 God can push down on you and you will find out that every book every message God will keep recommending it for the next six months is going to be your finances don't fight it if you jump that school of the spirit you will pay for it in the future in a way you are not prepared for For some of you, even though you are great men and women of God, you will get into seasons where the emphasis for you will be leadership and organization. Now you may be doing well in terms of the delivery of your spiritual solutions, but you need to now begin to build the structure. May you discern what God is doing at every season of your life in the name of Jesus. And for those of you who run organizations here, do not say we are multi-purpose doing everything. No. Look at me, please. How many of you know that in every house, there are many doors inside that house, but there is always a door called the main door. Is that true? The main door is what leads you and then you can leverage on other doors. Everybody who runs any successful conglomerate, there is one thing that stands them out and then they use the leverage of that product to now build all other products. When you talk about Bill Gates and Microsoft, Microsoft is not the only thing he does, but that is what brought him out, that gives him a leverage to do everything. When you talk about Warren Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway, that's not the only thing he does. He's not only an investor. There are many other things he does, but that is what brought him out. When you talk about all of Zuckerberg, it's not only Facebook and all of these things. There are many other things they do. There are many sports people who also have clothing lines but it is just is what brings them out you must know the area of emphasis per season i can teach on finances 
I can teach on relationships. I can teach on several things. But the core area of fire and grace and the area where the mantle speaks, you see, is in the area of encounters, communicating the wisdom of the Spirit, steering revival, helping people to have spiritual intelligence. Do not major on minors and minor on majors. What is most important in your life now? What is the most important aspect of your vision? And finally, number six. Are you ready for this? What are the major limitations, pitfalls, and distractions to avoid? I'm showing you five questions you must ask and answer because the systems you are going to build will be in honor to the answers that you find from this question what are the major limitations comma pitfalls and distractions to avoid first peter chapter 5 and verse 8 what are the major limitations because one of the assignment of systems and structures is to keep you true to your values to keep you true to what you stand for and you must be able to know the limitations the pitfalls and the distractions to avoid it says be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour please look up there are many pitfalls that can destroy you spiritually business wise politically and one of the ways you manage your growth and your result is by creating systems around your life respectfully speaking you cannot call me and say ah um apostle how are you um can you just travel to this state and come to social pay we just want to enjoy ourselves maybe i would have been able to do that years ago but right now there are systems around my life that help me to manage my consistency and manage my results are you getting what i'm saying now yes maybe the person who is calling you plans to kill you for instance and because you don't have systems and structures you get to a point in your life where you will need security clearance you will need several or it's not policing you it's managing you so that you remain effective for those who god has called you to do many of us don't have systems around our lives because we do not know the pitfall if there is the pitfall of pride in your life show me the system you have created if there is the pitfall of all kinds of lusts and all kinds of um, um, wrong relationships that can come and introduce you many people were destroyed because when god started promoting them their relationships changed they now found out that 90 percent of the wealthy people around them were godless people and because you have to go for all your friends birthday party they now traveled and went to several countries and saw things that were against their convictions but they could not leave it because that's what happens at this level systems can protect you beyond your imagination is god speaking to someone especially when it has to do with rising even financially the moment god begins to lift you the dynamics of your living will change immediately there are relationships you don't need but will force their way around your life systems will give you the legitimacy to say no to many things that may be good but are not useful for your life for instance if somebody invites you to come respectfully speaking for some birthday party or some occasion somewhere that may not honor your convictions if you say no they will ask you based on what systems give you the legitimacy are we together now yes is someone learning what i'm, I'm teaching you you see how powerful this is systems are very powerful they can protect you write this down You must build a code of conduct and a code of operation around your life 
and in your organization out of these answers the answers to these six questions you must build a code of conduct out of these five or six questions you must build a code of conduct and build a code of operation don't just have a code of conduct alone a code of conduct guides your character a code of operation guides how you do things it takes more than being a man of character to excel a code of conduct guides how you behave but a code of operation guides how you do things hallelujah yes yes ago let me tell you this i i got to a point in my life respectfully speaking when god started lifting me and doors were opening and until that time i in my conservative way i didn't think that i would need a system to manage my itinerary and all of that and people would call me and sometimes there could be five six calls for ministrations the dates clashing i may not even remember i would just tell this person yes oh you are my friend i will come yes and sometimes i would find out that i had agreed for three ministrations within the same time not knowing and the people i found out that i was damaging useful relationships in my life because now i would say yes to this and find out i said yes to this person now how would i choose i knew that my failure was a revelation that i had risen to a point in my life where allocating that be, and then because you know starting ministry most of my ministration was among friends and people who i was building a relationship with. and there were times that there, there are legitimate reasons to say no but i may not have the courage to say no so you allow the system to say no for you. you you see how powerful it is now there are many things you cannot say no to as an individual so you leave the no to the system most of you have have carried needless enemies in your life today because instead of allowing the system you built to say no you kept saying no by yourself you will have too many troubles in your life with people you will you will you will lose out on many precious relationships if you don't create a system around what you have to do this is very powerful build a code of conduct and a code of operation around your life now i'm going to be listening this is the final thing we're going to do and then we'll pray i want to guide you a bit as to the various aspects of our lives i don't just want to deal with systems and structures arbitrarily but i want to zoom down on a few things that you can take home you can know that this is this is the problem and this is the solution around this area of my life let's start with our spiritual lives write it down please how do i build a system that maintains my spiritual growth and maintains my spiritual fire most of us rise up today and go down tomorrow we're not able to sustain that spiritual momentum do you know why because everything that has to do with our spiritual life is based on emotion please look at me how many of you know that if you depend on your emotion to read your bible if you depend on your emotion to pray if you depend on your emotion to go to church you will not do any of that is that true What is the system you have put in place for your Bible study? What is the system you have put in place for consistent prayer? Anybody who tells you prayer is comfortable and convenient lie to you. Prayer has nothing to do with emotions. You have to create a system that not even your emotions can easily tamper with. Hallelujah. Imagine with me that I come up here on Sunday and I say, ladies and gentlemen, um, I know you love me and I love you too, but I want to be very honest with you. Today we're just going to pray in tongues and sing because um, I needed to sleep. I've, I've, I've been traveling around and I'm so tired and I don't have anything to tell you. I thank you for coming here since 10 o'clock in the morning and since 8.30, struggling for space and sitting down and uh, come again. May the Lord bless you. I'm sure that after two or three weeks I'll be prepared. 
how how irresponsible will that sound now don't you know that i live a busy schedule and yet not even you will excuse me for that carelessness why because preparing my sermon to make sure god's people are built has been systematized are we together now i don't allow my emotions to prepare sermons i will fail miserably there are many meetings that line up before me and so there are systems there are time periods where i'm about studying and preparing whether there is rain whether i am tired i can pamper myself afterwards but as far as that is concerned i must be instant in season and out of season someone shout amen, amen. please look up our parents many of us here our parents and our elderly ones here used to practice a system called morning devotion is that true now that didn't seem to be a system that um some of them would not pray in tongues for one hour nor finish their bibles cover to cover but notice that every time they woke up the first thing they did their bibles will usually be at the side of the bed is that true and because of that they were in contact with scripture every day for 50 years 41 years now some of us have come as zealous people who love the lord you can pray for eight hours one day and not pray again till after three weeks you can study the bible emotionally trying to finish 15 chapters in one day and then leave your bible alone then repent after two months when you hear a message like this and go back again everybody says systems please look at me you can never become spiritually alive and robust allowing your emotions to define the level of your spiritual commitment do you know why many many people who work in corporations and in the civil service no matter how res respectfully speaking how um, um, how draggy they are they are still able to maintain that because there is a register that you sign in when you come in is that true and they will query you there is a supervisor waiting for you so you can return home by 12 even attend a vigil sometimes end by four or five and as tired as you are you know your salary is at stake your job is at stake there are bills to pay it will fuel the energy you will stand up and bath and be on your way systems are supervisors they supervise compliance you must create a system around your spiritual life. What is the system you are built to make sure you study the Bible every day? And for some of us, when it has to do with Bible study, that is even a discussion for another day. Because you get up and there is no definition as to what you are becoming. Today you just feel like... Um, let me read proverbs i'm not in the mood for any history you just open proverbs chapter one and with sleep in your eyes you'll be reading the same verse for 20 minutes you think you have finished it you will come back read it again because there is no system and then the next day you read john chapter 2 and then when you wake up and stumble across a message online and it fires your spirit you quickly go back to revelation read something small on rapture you don't grow that way your growth is not methodical this is the reason why respectfully speaking we have many people who go to church but there is no growth because people do not grow methodically some of our parents who would read five chapters according to that devotional gradually gradually they may finish their bible in five years six years it may not be so much relative to your passion and your press but it was systematized can i tell you this if you have not outgrown um if you have not outgrown being guided to read a scripture by designing your own structure go back to it in fact i don't have a problem with devotionals they are a healthy start and they can help you of course in truth you will need more than that if you really want to press to certain dimensions but it is it is fair enough for you to start Someone met me and said, Apostle, I need to grow spiritually. And I confess that my study of the word and my prayer is not, I'm not really benefiting. I'm not really growing. How can you help me? This is what I told the person as a recommendation. I said, every message that is preached here in Koinonia, let that be your study for that week. At least start from there. 
so you listen to the message and you use it for bible study you use it to build now you settle down and look at the scriptures if you even just focus on what is being taught per week many of us have almost everybody's message in the world you have everybody's devotional but you have not listened to any of them when we go to your library there are books from even generals that are long gone and you will impress us by what is in your library but you've not even read up to one percent of it you will not grow that way say in the name of jesus i obtain grace to maintain my spiritual life by systematizing my approach please look up there are some of you here you cannot pray for one hour every day now the the value of prayer is not in the timing the value of prayer is in the efficiency and the fellowship but then timing is a discipline that can help you believe me when i tell you this some of you don't have the discipline to wake up in the night use an alarm clock an alarm clock is a system Oh, apostle, it's an embarrassment to my discernment. Please use it. Save yourself all this pride for nothing and get a good alarm clock. If you plan to wake up by 2 o'clock, let it start by 1.30. So you can struggle for 30 minutes. Whatever it is, you can be sure that by 2 you are awake. It's a strategy. Can I tell you this? The days that are coming will depend on your spiritual health. Man of God, the ministry that you run cannot rise beyond your spiritual health. That is the truth. Koinonia, if my prayer life is just one hour, you will not grow. I assure you, at this level of my life, it's not pride. If I pray for only one hour, praying for you, what God has done, will I finish saying thank you in one hour? There are many homes here that don't, that don't have a system for their spiritual upkeep. Respectfully speaking, don't feel bad. We're dealing with systems and structures. Anybody who feels like praying in the house just calls for prayer and then everybody just respects it. You can't grow that way. The home needs to have a system, whether it's in the morning or night or both, so that any visitor who comes to stay with you meets an existing system so people don't ship in babylon to your house and come and destroy your home when they come and meet a system they will respect it in this house by six o'clock we wake up well in my father's house i wake up by nine i respect you but you may have to comply with what is available now six o'clock let's begin to pray father we thank you and everybody is praying in the house how about bible studies I'm sorry to say it, but did you know that many children do not learn about God from home? They don't build character from home because there is no system for that. Our society continues to be destroyed today because we are hoping that religious, educational and governmental institutions will do the work that family should start. No systems. The reason why you are well nourished is because there is a system subconsciously you know that there will be breakfast lunch and dinner for some of us who fast you look at your loved ones those days when when we really started learning the things about fasting in the seminary we would they would combine the breakfast and lunch nobody eats it just because you are fasting length period will come and go but by night that revenge mission the breakfast in the morning and the lunch and dinner if anybody touches your breakfast or your lunch because you are spending time with God, when you are back from that mountain, you will now flog it out with them. Some of you are like that. They go to the kitchen, whose food is this? It's my own, leave it there, I'm fasting. <laughs> Even the gifts that visitors bring, the yam, the fruits, leave it there. Once it's 5 30, as you are praying in tongues, you are strolling around the kitchen. Six on the dot. Hallelujah. Now look at me, please. Look at me. How many of you here have a system for your renewal with God? Most of you do not have a system for retreats. You don't even know what retreats are, respectfully speaking, some of you. How can you as a leader even a spiritual leader not have a system of retreat it's not only when you have an attack that you need a retreat 
out of the seven days in a week what is the strategy you have put in place to make sure your fire is not lost monthly do you have a strategy quarterly do you have a strategy during your birthday what happens i just know that people celebrate me uh-huh spiritually don't you know that that is a defining moment in your life those days in zaria we used to practice it and even train people that your birthdays were very prophetic seasons in your life you will see people go on fasting three days four days to their birthdays they can celebrate only when they've sorted destiny with god but today, as simple as that was, many people encountered God and found purpose. Please return, return in the name of Jesus Christ. This is not just entertainment. Many of you, this is what started depleting your spiritual life. You are a man of God. The fire you used to command before was because maybe you were on campus or where you were, you were around fellow believers. So there was a system of check and balance. Now that you are alone, your prayer life gone down. Everything gone down. It's why when most people finish from campuses, they become a shadow of themselves. You know why? Because respectfully speaking, in campus there are fellowships. There is always something to do and there is someone to watch around your life but now you are an administrator now you are doing some other things everybody says systems you must create a system for bible study this night whether it's a topical study whether it's study book by book whether it's through the use of devotional make up your mind don't wait and say apostle why don't you do it and be giving us every day go and I'm, I'm teaching you here so that you will go and find it and study don't stay on to be over pampered like that you have to take responsibility spiritually number two what is the system you have put in place for your mental development what is mental development correcting and building superior beliefs what is the system you have put in place to give you a superior philosophy about life i've told you every day without fail and i stand before god and before his people there are teachings i listen to there are people whose thoughts shape my understanding and it is a non-negotiable sacrifice i must listen every day How are you going to rise and become a marvelous tool that God will use when you are not agreeing with him mentally? There is Bible on tape. There is Bible on MP3. Is that true? There are many ways you can manage. I have, I have this, this, the words of Jesus only. I have it on MP3. On almost all my flash drives my phone laptop everything I have it there so sometimes I can just be playing it the words of Jesus only because these are the words that shape my mind and my understanding the destiny of millions depend on my efficiency I cannot afford to be careless those days we used to sleep with worship songs to confess to you now we don't do so much of that but those days it used to be worship songs from night till morning worship songs playing so it was a system to maintain your spiritual life you wake up in the middle of the night with such intense presence this is how god built us oh please return to it please return to it in the name of jesus christ submit to mental development get up and look for people whose philosophies are word compliant there are people living in the personal development industry whose, whose thoughts are word compliant. Listen to it to adjust your philosophy about life. Don't depend on the low level thinking. You can't be global that way. Number three, you must build a system to manage your health and your wellness. This is a very powerful one. There are homes today, respectfully speaking, who, who do not have any kind of first aid structure. God forbid, should anything happen to someone in that house, even if it is Panadol that is needed, someone will have to book an Uber. It is carelessness. I am sorry, but just, just receive it from me this night. It's carelessness. There must be a provision in place 
do you know you are given only one body per lifetime i have taught you maintaining it is your responsibility and you must create a system around it you must create a system on how to access rich food vitamins and supplements if you want to and then scriptures for your health i have scriptures you know several men of god across the body have done several beautiful scriptures that speak about your health and your wellness i listen to it every time because i intend to live long and jesus said we live by bread and by words hallelujah i made up my mind one time that i was going to you know i was going to build a a gym just for fitness and um <laughs> don't laugh you've not even had the story you people make me always look like a, i'm a comedian listen do you know that i now said they should look for a gym instructor a coach for me <laughs> ladies and gentlemen they went and brought one fine young man who really respects and honors me I was inside when they said he had arrived I said okay let him just go to the gym and wait for me there when he went there and I saw the guy I said did I tell you people I want to box and learn this guy was built and looking like he could pick me I said what is he here for <laughs> to build me no it is such as you have that you give I'm not interested no no way that's not my assignment it's not in the blueprint of my destiny my assignment is just to be healthy any other thing greater than my strength i depend on the holy spirit and military people thank god he has surrounded me with so many generals they can help me ah that gentleman was built he now showed me videos of him doing exercises he was using chains chains hallelujah but the point is this look at me if you don't take care of your health you will die i'm not confessing negatively believe me when i tell you if you don't take care of your health is there a system in place apostle i collect 200 000 naira per month you can discuss and allocate something for healthy living it is true it's a discipline we must learn in the body of Christ. Don't allow taking care of your health be an emotional thing. The day the pain becomes overbearing. Some of you, you live in pain every day. You are used to it. And these are signs that continue in your body for 10 years. Medical science will tell us that most conditions that destroy people can be managed if you were dealt with in its infancy. Do you agree with me on that? Hallelujah. I'm a man of faith. Oh, I'm a man of the spirit. But the Bible says wisdom is profitable to direct. I need to live long for the sake of the assignment. We are not afraid of death, but we know that we need to live long to finish that which God has given to us. Are we together? I'm saying this thing so that you will go back home. Don't just say, I attended Koinonia and I laughed. No, go back and sit down. For some of you, you may start this. You need to start putting a good system to have clean drinking water in your house. You are too blessed to be taking the kind of water you are taking. It's pure carelessness. It's just that you've not paid attention to it. What system have you put in place to excel in your work? Your work here means your career, your business, and your ministry man of god what system have you put in place to meet with your leaders and train your leaders and train your workers and help them love god do you know it is dangerous and there are several people here who are preachers it is dangerous to be a man of god on fire and then not know what is happening to your leaders you don't even know what is happening to your leaders they are just there you don't know whether they pray you don't know whether they fast you don't know whether they love god you just know that anytime you give them an assignment they do it it's a risk it's a risk to you and to that vision continuous development do you have a system for buying good clothes do you have a system for your presentation i'm being very simple with you but it is true be very systemic around your life 
there are some of you by reason of what you do you can't be dressing in certain ways and say it does not matter those who bless you know how much they are giving you and the way you are dressing does not justify their sacrifice on your life there are some of you right now if god leads me to bless you and i say who is your tailor you say well it depends last week it was one i just found somebody new you don't have anything like that it's terrible how then can favor become consistent in your life system who cleans your house i just call people are you free or oh, yeah come and clean my parlor today what is there with getting someone with as little as 30 50 000 naira for most of you especially because god has helped you why allow your house to be so dirty and unkept you drive prospective friends and business people in your house and you have the money to keep that house clean you can't be sweeping it every day by reason of what you do why don't you create a system your house is not too small to have a staff structure of two three people give them an orientation you are welcome to this house this is how things happen here run this house as family this is your job description do this very well when visitors come this is how to greet them this is what you serve them if they ask any question beyond you this is what to do systems you save yourself embarrassment just by having systems for many of us it's not lack of money is that our life is not systemic enough to attract our next level to us there is too much freelancing of things are we together a visitor comes to your house and he needs a bottle of water and there is nobody in the house who can go and bring the bottle of water it shouldn't be What are the systems that you have put in place now this is a very serious thing what are the systems in place you have you have put for family life training your children spending time with your spouse bills welfare that have to do with the home these are very serious things for many of us respectfully speaking there is no system to raise the children god has given you they just keep growing in your house if they are fortunate to find good friends or a good school to raise them save Johnny if it's unfortunate for them and they find bad friends save Johnny for some of us respectfully speaking our children can be becoming you know all kinds of bad bad you know decadence in the house and yet we don't know we are busy making money we are busy doing several things and there is no system that was the mistake of Eli Go and read your Bible, you see the story of Eli. He was a great man. Eli was sincere, but he was careless over Hophni and Phinehas, his sons. And as a result, it led to his own death. Your children will not kill you. In the name of Jesus. Family life. It's very important. What about your finances? What is the system you have in place for budgeting? There are some of us today, respectfully speaking, with what you are earning per month, in all fairness and in all sincerity, you may not be earning the whole world, but there are certain needs you should not have if there were a system in your life. That some of you still go to borrow money and beg from certain people who are by far less earners than you, simply because their life is more systematized. There are certain kinds of birthdays you should not be doing, not with the kind of money you are earning. No, you are not yet there. There are certain kinds of, respectfully speaking, society living that should not be, not with the kind of money you are earning. As God lifts you, you can adjust your lifestyle to suit the growth, but the pressure of society. There are people who can go to a restaurant and millionaires are spending 100, 200,000 because their businesses will return back that money that night. But you who, even if it's favor that came to you, favor is maintained by wisdom. You also join and, and spend 200,000 naira that night and you go back, they are sleeping and you cannot sleep. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look up. How about ministries? There are ministries that may not have the budget to be doing certain things they are doing. Respectfully speaking, this is with love to the body of Christ. 
for many years in this ministry we limited the things that we did because of the future and we knew that there will be times for capital projects and serious finances will be needed but there will be need for management to cut away excesses and thank god for that wisdom today at the level he has brought there is nothing we want to do that we cannot do it didn't just happen by favor alone through wisdom a house is built is someone learning now there are people today when you see them you will think they have estates but in truth they do not have a single house of their own why they have been earning a lot of money i'm a giver but let me teach you the truth even giving must be guarded with discretion and wisdom just because god mandates that we give does not mean we should be careless some of you are emotional givers it's not just revelation somebody god can provide you one million naira and maybe in your state or your area it can buy even if it's a plot of land and you can just sit in church hearing me preach now and say this man kai and you carry the one million now if god led you no problem but that you just stand up emotionally do you know there are people who have given to this ministry and called the finance department sincerely i'm not mocking them later on that they made mistakes and please is there a way i mean it i'm not joking for some of you when when they call maybe in your various assemblies or in any meeting they call for a vow or they call for giving you see your colleagues and your contemporaries come out and out of sheer carnality and pressure not the leadership of the spirit how many of you can give 10 10 million here and what the holy ghost is restraining us mm -mm. you are owing you are still paying you have not paid your children's school fees now i'm a giver i've taught you giving there are many people today who even run away from churches because they vowed vows that they cannot pay you went to three churches and pledged 10 10 million and all the men of god know you you are running away your children are running away it was needless systems most people don't prepare their offering before they come to church it is when they see the person who is who is say oh, package your tithes and offerings they just check and look at everything that's why you are not growing financially this is the balance you can't give god peanuts and check what is here one thousand you return it back 500 you return it back 100 naira you return it back 50 naira you return it back then you carry the bad one and just squeeze it and drop and then you are laughing and god is saying i'm seeing your heart you ate in a restaurant before coming to church you spent ten thousand, and you came and dropped 50 naira i don't mean to be a bearer of bad news but you will not grow that way where your heart is there your treasure will be how about a system for savings do you know why pension scheme works aside from corruption and other things do you know why it works i will tell you because there is an automatic system to, de to deduct from your salary is that true all through your lifetime if they gave you all the money and say be depositing it yourself only one percent of the people who receive pension today will have it they know that there is a limitation in all men so they created a system out of it so that after 35 years of service out of that maybe added to it maybe you haven't put it in some investment account with the little gain there they can now be blessing you with it for the rest of your life there must be a system to save some of you if you calculate all that god has brought to your life today january somebody gave you one million for happy new year somebody gave you five million someone gave you two hundred thousand someone gave you three hundred thousand during your birthday you got ten million you have carried like thirty million how much do you have now fifteen thousand it's carelessness Do you have a system in your life for replenishing listen to my financial series do you have a system in your life do you know there are many people who enjoy birthday parties there are many people who enjoy anniversaries and when it's time for their children's school fees they literally stand stranded and do you know why nobody helps them because the impression they have given is that i am comfortable 
You can't call us for a meeting and spend 30 million and be asking for 500,000 for your child. It does not add up. When people know you are genuinely in need and you demonstrate it by diligence to what God has already given you, people will be very quick to support you. I tell you this. There are times people come to me, respectfully speaking, to ask for help. And I look at them. I look at what they are wearing. I calculate, at least with my mind, look at what this guy is wearing. Look at the kind of car he came out from. And then he stands arrogantly and he says, I don't know, somebody said I should come and meet you. I don't know. And I said, no, this, this man is not worthy of help. If you help them, maybe just pay to the school and help the children, but not because of the person. Wastage. There are people driving cars today that are by far bigger than their levels. You have a car, respectfully speaking, of 50 million, 40 million, and you don't have a house. It's, it's, not, it's not a wise calculation. Everybody says systems. You may not like me this night, but I love you. Who will soon pray? You came to church. You should live wiser. Some of you... There are some money that should have come to you. God delayed it until you hear this message. Because if that money had arrived last week, with all the prophecies I've been giving you, God, God has allowed you now because he wants you to, now that it comes with this wisdom, those friends that used to call you, has it come? You tell them, listen, listen to Koinonia message. Part three, striving for mastery. manage your passion for celebration and some of these excessive things let god build you and you can have to do anything and even give are we together how about relationships what system have you put in place for having and maintaining the various relationships needed in your life most of us don't have a system what is the standard in your life for having friends? Anybody who just smiles at you and says, I like your shoe, or you just meet in a program, suddenly becomes your friend. You call them your covenant friend, bosom friend, until they tear you into pieces after two weeks, you leave them and look for another one. No, there has to be a standard. What is your standard for having friends? I've taught you this about relationships. There are general relationships. There are seasonal relationships. But there are covenant or destiny relationships. There are many of us, you can meet someone for the first time. And in two hours, you've told the person everything about your life. Plus the problem you have with your spouse, the problem that you have with your man of God, the problem you have with your children. And at the end of it, the man laughs. The day you have a problem with that man, he has everything in the palm of his hands. Be wise as serpents, Jesus said, and to be gentle as doves. Is someone getting wiser? Please look at me. There must be a system to manage your relationships. I told you my story. My dear mom, I'm sure she's following, watching now. Years ago, I didn't used to have that time, not intentionally. That time, you know, for my family and all of that, I was busy ministry, justifiably busy. And then we used to gather together 1st of January to pray. And after we finished, you know, AOB and my mother made a statement. I cried that night. My mother said, well, her statement is directed to me. She said, please, sometimes my family members also have issues. They want to see me. They want me to pray for them. And she would not mind that even if it is to tell them what time to be calling me. I said, my mother, this is the person that everybody who says, um, hail king of kings they are the same people who will say crucify you these are some of the people who will stay with you when everybody runs away and i went back and i said god and i made up my mind that i was going to come up with an a system of reaching out and at least doing my best to maintain my relationship with my family member S some of you, you need to do this don't generalize your relationships who are the five most important people in your life today? By reason of number one, the spiritual contribution they bring to your life. By reason of number two, their, their dependability as friends in your life. By reason of number three, the level and magnitude of their financial commitment to your life. Don't generalize everybody. No, it's a mistake. That's why I took out time to celebrate my precious workers. And I did that sincerely. I have taught you this year. Not everybody thinks you are a big deal.
beloved people of God, when you find people who love you sincerely and believe you are a big deal, don't ignore them. Some of you, by reason of this teaching, you need to come up with a system. Maybe once every week, every two weeks, every month. If I cannot see my loved ones, at least I will send them a text. I will call them. Can I tell you, especially for your parents, whether you like it or not, someday they will not be here again. Don't waste the opportunity being a celebrity around the world to people who only love your gift and not you and forget the people that really matter in your life. It's time to reorder your life and create systems. Let me tell you this sincerely. No matter where I travel to in a year, no matter what it is, if I have to for any reason, I will not miss koinonia maybe more than two three times and it has to be a justifiable reason maybe if i travel out and i'm not able to come or maybe i'm doing a conference somewhere that may be the only reason but if it is sunday you will find me here as much as possible the school of ministry i make sure that i am there to teach them by myself is it not me god called why did i say yes if I say yes, I must obtain the grace and stay and be serious. There are some of you here who are men of God. You are losing your core membership in the name of the world celebrating you. They will leave you in a heartbeat the day they find an alternative. The ones who love you enough to come and sit and be part of the vision are deserving of your best. This is true. I learned this from God's sermon, Bishop Oedeko, and, so, and many of our fathers of faith in this nation. A few of them have had the privilege of talking with them. Except it is necessary, they will be home. Not out of insecurity. It is their primary assignment. Can I tell you, as much as you see me all around this nation and around the world, believe me, my dear people, you are my primary assignment. And as far as God grants grace, I will not fail in that. I will make sure that week after week, to honor your sacrifice of taking the risk to be part of this vision, system when people know you are that serious about them they will be serious about you too they can now invite people to come knowing that you will not waste their time i have said this human beings are not stupid if they find out that you are not contributing constructive value to their life they may not run away from you but they will look for an alternative that serves them well please go back and rewrite your relationships again who are the people who have shown you the greatest honor in your life? Write it down. The first five. Invest in that relationship. Who are the first five people who you know are shoulders you can lean on? No matter what happens in your tears and in your smiling, they will be there. They are not there for when you are happy. If you tell them today they diagnose me of something, they will say, thank God I'm here. We will die here. We will trust God and release our faith. Don't have those kind of people in your life and push them away in the name of I don't trust anybody. No. I love everybody, but everybody does not occupy the same place in my life as far as relationships is concerned. There are people who have gone out of their way to show me love, honor, kindness, to invest in my life, not just in monetary times, but these are people that if they see me crying today, they will not ask why are you crying they will look for a handkerchief first and make sure the crying stops before they say why are you crying how could i throw such people out of my life if you want to strive for mastery this is what you must understand that's why you can see a few people they are never lonely they are never left alone because they've created systems are we together Have you created a system on giving? There are people who once blessed you, who once helped you. Some of them are aged today. Some of them don't have the privilege to be as strong as they were when the government. Have you created a system around your finances to make sure that at least you are reaching out to them? You see, politicians here have a lesson that they teach us. Most of them, this is what they do. They remember people who have been there for them. And respectfully speaking, even if they are pretending it, they do it there so that the rainy days, they can, the person can remember them. You must edge your impact in the minds of people so that when the, the rainy days come, they will remember you.
if you ever see any man excelling in life in ministry in business they systematize their success by helping them to reign helping them to understand what they need to do to reign I have put a system in my life to make sure my prayer life never goes down a system of refueling a system of maintenance a system of retreat if I go on a retreat today koinonia should not suffer because I'm going on a retreat a system has been put in place father have you put a system in your house that if you are caught up in traffic or you are not able to come back home the school fees of your children will still be paid your wife will still be taken care of man of God have you put a system in your church that even when you are not around the fire on the altar never goes down that your values become uncompromising have you put a system in place striving for mastery part one the foundation part two the laws of dominion part three the power of systems and structures I have been holding this mic for at least one or two hours now and yet it has failed to stop because there is a system that powers it and for as long as the conditions for that system is in place I can hold this from morning even up till night my goal is for you to become like Jesus in every way first in your character and your stature and then through knowledge and high level illumination that you truly become people of influence and power that God can do much with you witnesses indeed according to John chapter 1 and verse 6 and 7 he says there was a man sent from God his name was John and he says the same came for a witness to bear witness to the light that all men through him might believe every teaching you receive here series after series and there are so many of them lined up every miracle service here every time of counseling every time of prayer every activity in this ministry was designed by the spirit of god and through wisdom to work in synergy to build you to become a certain kind of people my challenge for you tonight is that god desires that you leave the realm of trial and error man of god enough of coming on stage without what to preach and giving flimsy explanations and say you know my schedule is busy enough of amateurism in display or communicating the word it's time to strive towards perfection hebrews chapter 6 and verse 1 as we prepare to pray hebrews 6 therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of christ it says let us go on to perfection unto perfection unto perfection a higher level of maturity it's time for people to be able to say i know that if we meet this preacher my life will change why because they know that there is a system around your life yes it is true we are humans but within the boundary of god's grace and principle you can become so exceptional that your life becomes an inspiration even to nations is someone ready to pray more love more power more of you in my life more love more power more of you in my life more love more love more love more power more of you in my life. Hallelujah. In one minute as you're standing looking at me, many of you following from across the globe, the Spirit of God is asking you right now, identify the areas of inefficiency in your life 
identify the areas of consistent compromises in your life identify the areas of inefficiency swings highs and lows for some of you is your spiritual growth you have never maintained an ever increasing consistent spiritual life for one full year you must backslide somewhere and someone prays for you and you get back it's time to strive for mastery there are some of you your finances you have never had one year debt free one year trouble free one full year that you didn't have to borrow money you can strive for mastery for some of you it's your family life for some of you it's the area of your mind i have discussed a number of areas for some of you it's your organization you have a great organization but there is no leadership and no management everything is haphazard no predictability you do not have the structure that can hold the growth you are looking for it's time to reinvent yourself through wisdom some of you by monday tomorrow you need to go to your place of work gather your staff together no matter how large and how small that store is you are not producing anything tomorrow it's a leadership training ladies and gentlemen i have learned something we have found the key to our inefficiency there are no standards in this place of work you come to work when you want to you don't come when you want to you wear anything you say anything there is no code that governs how we speak we don't have ethics there is no code of conduct there is no code of operation no modus operandi we look like like different people even though we are selling the same product it has to change you have leaders and pastors under you everybody comes to preach what he wants to say that is wrong within the context of that spiritual organization you don't come and carry a mic and say well I'm a pastor in a ministry but I will preach what I like no no you have to be able to walk in keeping with the mandates given to the man of God at least within the time of your service there faithfulness is demanded are you getting what I'm saying now very important have you seen certain corporations that when you meet three different staff they sound like three different people this one says welcome God bless you how are you how can we help you the other one says, hey, how are you and and he's talking and you're saying you were trained by the same person say yes it's time to go back and standardize your results the nations are waiting for you you are a businessman standardize your results you are a man of God standardize your results if they invite you for a healing meeting let it be that healing happens if they invite you for a breakthrough meeting let it be that lives change I vowed a vow to God and I've told you that nobody on earth will ever meet me twice before they are changed But it's not just an empty statement you must defend it by the fire and the consistency of fanning your spiritual life you didn't waste your time tonight i assure you you came to church to learn something for some of you this is the reason why increase has not come no matter the prophecy increase will be a waste there is no structure I prophesied as I was commanded life came to the bones and the Bible says when life came to the bones flesh came upon the bones bone to his bone there are family members that need to go back and sit down right now and say listen we need to put a system and a structure in this house are we together we can't have five children one is saying good morning one is saying how far one is saying what is your business there has to be a structure The mother cannot be responsible and the father is irresponsible, does not care. No, there has to be a structure and a system. Are we together? Who pays the school fees of the children? Who is the one paying and who is helping? Let it be defined. Let your wife not be paying the school fees and then you say, hey, after all, you are doing it. The most important thing is that we are one. What is the job description in this house? If she's paying the school fees effortlessly, you must be ready to cook sometimes too, effortlessly. <laughs> Sorry. Structure. I challenge the men in this ministry. You know what your mandate is. Don't be irresponsible. This is not an irresponsible ministry. Stand to your mandate. Take care of your families. Don't sit down and cross your leg and follow these things unbelievers do. And punish the woman just because she said yes to you no let there be discipline 
every man here should get up is your responsibility by God as far as the context of family is concerned to make sure that your children eat I know that things may not be I don't have money have relationships then I've taught you that relationships are currencies too if you don't have money respect those who have it and honor and serve your way to their life so that you can enjoy the leverage but where you don't have resources and you are arrogant again, you are designing failure. How about spirituality? Please let me challenge you. Take this issue of your spiritual life seriously. When you get up, pray. Okay, in this family, some of you may need to go online, download Bible study plan or scripture reading plan or a devotional that, is, that suits you, that is comprehensive. What is the system in place for your prayer? As a man of God, is there a system for the prayer of your ministry? Is there a system for the people to learn God's word? Is there a principle, a, a, a system for them to be trained, to know? Don't assume that just because you are sincere, the system will work. You have to bring people together and teach them. Nobody within your care should outgrow the need to be mentored and helped. Anybody who outgrows your mentorship has outgrown being around your space too. Are you ready to pray in one minute please no movement around you are going to cry to God from the depth of your heart Lord I'm ready to step up to a life and a Christian experience that produces results indeed I am tired of shadow boxing my life up today down today tomorrow spiritually financially and otherwise you have taught me tonight the power of systems and structures no wonder the bones in my destiny have not come back to become a great army because the bone has refused to come to its bone i take responsibility for my state right now and i obtain grace someone open your mouth and begin to pray please pray from the depth of your heart outside pray all the overflows pray following by way of television praying or online pray make sure you are praying we're wrapping up talk to jesus my life needs to shine forth this is the season of strange results it's my season of marvelous light lord you have brought me light i need to systematize my results systematize my spiritual growth systematize my mental development systematize my approach to life approach to learning my business my organization the ministry you've committed to my hands you are there to help me but i obtain grace to put systems and structures leadership structures a modus operandi that is derived from scripture that will produce consistency of results a code of conduct and a code of operation pray a code of conduct and a code of operation a system that is derived from scripture that governs how i behave and respond to life a system derived from scripture that governs how I do the things I do that my actions become predictable now unto the lamb upon the throne we raise a sound we raise a sound for he is God and God alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more time. Now unto the Lamb upon the throne. We raise the sun. We raise the sun. We raise the sun. We
me I want to speak over your life now and I want you to receive it with your heart not just by the lifting of hands but from the depth of your spirit listen this organization is related to lack there were 5,000 people randomly arranged in that crusade ground but when it was time for feeding Jesus says before bread comes let them sit down arrange everybody let there be order structure it so that the distribution will be well can you imagine that even with that order there were still 12 baskets imagine what would have been wasted in the disorder I've been to redemption camp I've been to MFM camp I've been to almost if not all the major campgrounds by the grace of God sometimes I look at these magnificent ministries and these campgrounds and I wonder what system did they create to manage people like this do you know what it takes to manage people like that how do you sit down and know that over 30,000 branches 20,000 branches 10,000 branches are healthy and you are in one place and the Holy Spirit told me God is still seated on the throne and yet every Christian he has not had to come to the earth to follow compliance even in heaven when Lucifer rebelled it was the system that fought him God already put a system God never had to stand up from the throne and say ah, who is threatening my stay there was already an allocation of responsibilities the Bible never said God fought he said Michael he didn't say any angel there was an angel allocated to make sure justice God is the one who sits upon a throne made up of righteousness and justice but because of system even in heaven today you don't find people run into the throne room just to bow there is order and there is system there is what must be said before they say what is the lamb heaven without evil still has doors and gates say systems when Jesus walked upon the earth he told the people let them sit down and when they sat down he carried five loaf two fish he blessed it he said now go to the system that is already organized and begin to prosper them listen the testimonies that will come out from this because many of you you see this is what the devil has been fighting this is why your Christian experience does not look exciting because you are up today with zeal and passion and then you go down sometimes painfully then you start again but my Bible says the path of the just should be as a shining light that shines ever brighter go and write out every area that is not working in your life or the area that is epileptic in its result you will check there and find out that a system and a structure is what is missing maybe not lack of character maybe not sincerity of heart some of you there are friends that are long overdue to get out of your life wrong associations most of them are unbelievers but because you have not created a system in your life there is no legitimacy to say no they are your classmates they are your friends they are your tribes people when you create a system let the system do the fighting are we together you're going to pray one last prayer you're going to ask the Lord to visit that area in your life where your results need to be predictable in your Christian experience that one area go ahead and pray you're about to receive something to cap up this series you have learned about the spirituality of life you have learned about the fact that the realm of the spirit controls this realm you have learned the various laws that make for dominion now the Lord has brought us into this understanding of systems and structures bone to his bone hallelujah hallelujah when Joseph was living a prophecy as prime minister he gave them a word he said someday the Lord is going to bring you an exodus out of this land and he says make sure as you are going carry my bones with you do you know what he was saying do not forget the structure do not forget the formula 
that made you to excel even in a strange land as you leave this land carry that understanding with you not just a physical skeleton alone carry that understanding if it worked for you in in uh, egypt it will work for you any other place every organization runs by systems and structures there is no luck when the results become sustainable you can have short-term results that is purely by luck man of god it's time for the ministry to rise i don't doubt your call you are anointed you are a prophet you are an apostle you're a pastor you're an evangelist but the problem is the system businessman with what you carry you should be relating with the kings in that industry but lack of system has brought you down it's time to go back and reorder your life let me be able to know that every day you pray every day you study scripture let me be able to know that you have predefined times when you fast you don't have to announce it and tell everybody there are times that there can be corporate fast but when is your own personal one let me be able to know the times that you can go for a retreat alone what is the system in your life when there is an attack what is the system in your life when something good happens to celebrate you must go back and give your life that level of meticulous definition and i pray for you in the name of jesus that whilst you are focused doing that may the grace of god work for you may the mercy of god speak on your behalf in the name of jesus christ anywhere you have not gotten sustainable results by reason of this series in the name of jesus the power to begin to command results receive it in the name of jesus christ and hear me anything that should have been released in your life but was withheld whether by demonic forces or it was a deliberate act of god to help you so you do not lose it when it comes i declare that now that you know these things may the mercy of god release it to you now there will be no wastage in your life from today no spiritual wastage no financial wastage no relational wastage no mental wastage no depleting of your health in the name of jesus christ and hear me for those of you who have who are now experiencing any kind of depletion or any kind of trouble that came directly because you did not understand systems and structures whether you are owing financially or maybe your health has deteriorated as a result of this or your relationships have plunged into misery or something is wrong with your spiritual life the same way the hair of Samson grew back by the mercy of God I decree and declare that his mercy speaks to that issue now everything dead or dying in your life by this proclamation it jacks back to life now but like i always say there are two areas that are my main focus number one is your spiritual life number two is your finances let me speak over both in the name of jesus that the least among us here may you be as great as david that the least among us globally the global koinonia family may the least among us by grace be as great as david and even for the body of christ in the name of jesus christ may god begin to mature the saints across denominations across regions across nations in the name of jesus christ then i pray for your finances that when men say there is a casting down for you i decree and declare by the power of prophecy may you say there is a lifting up i want you to believe there is a grace for what i'm telling you i'm saying it again in the name of jesus anyone here who is in need of financial breakthroughs because of seasons in your life that you are in i stand by the god who has shown mercy that in the name of jesus may those doors be open speedily open speedily open speedily may my god touch the heart of men to bring treasures and blessings to you and let me pray over you 
whatever it is that you do the work that you do whether ministry your career business whatever it is in the name of jesus i empower it to begin to produce results in the name of jesus christ thank you heavenly father in jesus name i pray just a minute or two you can go ahead and celebrate jesus i want to make the altar call right now hallelujah everything happens in this kingdom because god designed a system seed time and harvest impartation spiritual growth and now salvation let's minimize movement as i make this altar call it is always my joy and delight to give people an opportunity who need jesus sincerely and desperately in their life the bible says the lord added daily to them as many as should be saved every time god's people come there are always those who are to be saved there are people here in this auditorium and all the overflows following by way of television and the internet you are saying apostle thank you so much i desire to begin this experience with god but i need the salvation of my soul or you are here you are saying apostle i love jesus but my life has gone haywire and i need restoration please make sure that you are not ashamed to say anyone is looking at me this is between you and the god of heaven wherever you are we have just one minute for you i want you to leave your seat right now and come and stand here everyone god bless you people are coming take that bold step and come to jesus god bless you as you come make sure you win that war you are rededicating your life to jesus you are making that decision god bless you they are coming are you celebrating them all the other the overflows you follow suit come to jesus he's able to give you a new beginning you can start afresh again apostle i want to come but i'm not sure i remember giving my heart to jesus but things have gone haywire can i join them you are most welcome very quickly join them he is able to save even to the uttermost. He will give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Young and old, keep coming. Hallelujah. If you are joining them, please hurry up. I want to pray now. Thank you so much for all of you who have come to make this decision. The Bible says, as many as would come to him, he will in no wise despise. Thank you for the courage to make this glorious decision. Jesus said, if you reject me before men or deny me before men that I would deny you before my father, here's a chance for you to start afresh with Jesus. Even if not anew, he gives you room to start afresh. Thank you so much for coming. I want you to lift your right hand, if you will, all of you who are here. And those who are connecting by way of television and internet you can pray the same prayer the power of god is there to ensure that you become recipients of this glorious life say lord jesus say it again convincingly say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I make Jesus Savior of my soul Lord of my life and my King I declare that the power of sin of Satan of hell and the grave is broken over my life I receive eternal life into my spirit I receive the abundance of grace even the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name amen and amen keep your hands lifted father thank you so much for these ones you have brought them to Jesus and I pray by the authority of scripture that their sins are forgiven I also declare upon you that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life I declare that by the authority of scripture you are recipients of the life of God and from today and forever you go forward ever and backward never I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit may you be established and grounded in righteousness for in Jesus name I pray 
amen and amen god bless you thank you so very much may i request that you move to my right which is your left you have the counselors waving their hands to you they'll have a word with you and then you'll be back to your seat let's celebrate them koinonia thank you so very much hallelujah hallelujah thank you so very much please may i request that after the grace uh, because of the rain as much as god grants you the grace if you can give someone a lift that you find even though i know that because of the times that we live in you know people are trying to be careful but at least if and when you can please do well to help someone so that um it can complement uh with in addition to some of the arrangements that have been made the bus arrangements and so on and so forth may the lord bless you in the name of jesus and again do remember that every time you come please do not come alone do not come alone there are many people who need to be saved there are many people who need to be mentored they need to access light based on scripture let your life be the link and the platform for them to receive this rise up on your feet as we close for tonight thank you so much for your patience and your love the lord bless you and may your week beginning be an excellent one you will see the hand of god in your life all through this week go and excel go and reign in jesus name your fire and your hunger for god will remain afloat in the name of jesus you go from glory to glory and grace to grace in jesus name god bless you let's share the grace in fellowship the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen god bless you and see you on sunday